their mind It's just the days we live in Most of the time The Gala Club's uh, formed in 1875, so uh, an old club, one of the oldest in the Borders. In fact, it's one of the oldest in the Scottish Rugby Union. We've been members of the Border League and in the Premiership uh, since it was formed. How would you describe the, the, the current state of, of Gala Rugby Football Club? I think we're in a stronger position now than we've been for a very, very long time. Uh, I think the people who have got on board are very positive uh, and we're aiming to get to the top. Uh, so, no, I think we're in good stead. Uh, financial, financially it's difficult, but uh, we've got to try and marry the playing side with the financial side and uh, hopefully we'll get there. The one thing is our facilities. I think the facilities we've got as a club are second to none in Scotland. So that gives us a head start on anybody else. You know, we've got a heated pitch, we've got floodlights, we've got great facilities. Uh, and on top of that, we've got one of the best teams in Scotland at the moment. So without paying players, how do you retain them? How do you attract them in the first place? It's just team building. I think uh, we've got a good coach who's been, who's coming into his fifth year. He's got a strong core of players and they all work for each other and they're a great bunch of guys and uh, I think that's why I'm so positive about the future for us. A gala is strig as a mariaf gwaj on the rugby nation de a gleig son a hir turis van laichin gallin a mochgadun. A mochig gynard coach George Graham na a keolachig de loog netherdale. I'm a Stirling boy and uh, I've played against Gala many times where I've broke a few bones and, and spilled a bit of blood. So yeah, passion is, um, I'm very aware of the, the border's passion uh, and I'm sort of immersed in it myself because, you know, I'm, I'm not a borderer but I'm, I'm pretty much say I'm a plastic borderer now because I do uh, show my passion quite a lot and my feelings for this group of players and this club and the way that I conduct myself and the way that I want these boys to win. And, uh, I'm sure there's a few people probably take that a different way because they don't know me because I am fairly vocal, I am fairly aggressive towards my players, but they know that it's aggression in terms of I want the best of them and they know that if they do something wrong, I'm going to let you know they're doing something wrong only because I know you can do better. What's the relationship like between captain and head coach? At home it's fine, but at here and the training it's a little bit different. I, I think I always get... Um, so at the bad end of the stick, I always have to work a little bit harder, which is the way it should be, to be honest. I don't mind it. I mean, if my dad's a coach, I'm always going to try a little bit harder. I think I need to prove myself a little bit more. And then, I mean, I don't know if, if he sees it like that or the players see it like that, but I've, I view it like that. And I think if I'm going to train, if I want to be playing for Gala, then I, I, need to, I need to prove myself. Even if he wasn't a coach, I think I'd, I always want to try my hardest in every training session, no matter who I'm playing for. How do, you, how do you manage the demands you place on the players with the knowledge that they are part-time, they've got other jobs? Well, that's the key. It's, it's, I think, simplifying everything. It's not overloading them with information. It's making sure that we overlearn in terms of we, we do over and over and over again. It's a man management thing. It's realising that I kind of push them too far because they're working every day. They don't get paid for this. They, they got their own time, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, and a Saturday, and they'll spill blood and they'll they'll put their body in the line. So I'm I'm acutely aware of of the demands that that puts on them. Uh, sometimes they can't make it for training. Sometimes they can't make it because they're working or they have functions or they have private things. And you have to be uh, flexible that way. Although I'm not the most flexible guy in the world when it comes to mission training, as I'm sure the boys have probably said. When you were in primary school, could you imagine playing at Netherdale on the Saturday in front of a big crowd? Uh, no, not really. Obviously, that, that's what I dreamt to do. Uh, I was actually a ball boy for for the main uh, for the main team uh, back back in the day, and yeah, I'd come down with my mates uh, and watch the games in, in secondary school as well. And, you know, watch your, your your idols and your stars, like Sir Gregor Townsend, Chris Patterson, you know, to name but a few. So you always wanted to be uh, in their position and you know, in in that team. Uh, and and you know now we are, which which is brilliant. 
na nyachtri ha daichet se kehir de chluhid ar nadr nashant na halapu ir nochgig a gala. Agis le tri hir de nyoog klarich jilish na kadmiachke ab nochis gmein tilligam. A big part of my remit with uh, my role as development officer is that uh, I'm fortunate to go into 11 of the primary schools here in the Gala catchment area. My role is to get as many of the, the children playing the game of rugby as possible, to bring more through uh, because hopefully as more move up and move on, uh, we need to fill these places. We need the second team players, we need the third team players, you know, so it's very, very important uh, to bring these guys through. Uh, and it's uh, a role that every club, I think every club in Scotland now has a, a development officer, uh, which is great. And you can only thank local sponsors for that, as well as SRU for uh, helping funding that. But it's, it's a very important part of the, uh, the rugby structure, especially here at Gala. Does it help to have someone like Gregor Townsend, a very famous Gala man, at the helm at Glasgow? Uh, yes and no. Uh, it's it's great to see that because uh, the, uh, being a local a local lad, uh, and the same with Chris Patterson. Uh, but again, the younger ones, Gregor, you know, did I say it? A lot of them don't know him. <laughs> you know, the younger ones where Chris obviously just retired playing. Uh, there's probably more a, a connection there. But no, it's great. We can tell uh, uh, the kids and we can identify the gala, the gala boys that have came through the system that are involved. And that's just, it's just good to have that. Uh, uh, and to let them know that uh, local boys have made the grade and that there is opportunities there. When you've had a good win on a Saturday, what does it mean to you to be, to be in the town, to, to speak to people from the town about the game? Do they ask about the game? Yeah, they do. It means so much to, to local people, to, to Gala people. You know, on a Saturday morning, if you're out and about, you know, everybody's asking what the team is, you know, who are you playing, if they don't know that already. Uh, and obviously the majority of the, the people are down, we, we get a really good support every week. And then afterwards, you know, we can, we can celebrate a, a good win together. You're involved in the marketing side of things. In terms of crowds, how well are you doing these days com compared to the past? Not as well as the past, obviously, uh, which is disappointing. But you'll notice when you're going all around the border clubs, the, we've got big stands here. Well, these stands were purpose-built because we had the crowds uh, back in the 70s and 80s. But it's, it's slowly coming back. It's still a good product. Uh, it's the only product below the, the pro level and uh, it's an exciting Premiership this year. It's got to be nip and tuck. There's got to be a lot of quirks before it's finished and I just wish the, the rugby supporters would come out and, and back it. You're not from the borders originally. What does it feel like to play in such a, a rugby-focused area? It's brilliant. I've, I've been brought up with rugby and I, I love rugby. I would love to play it every day of the week. It's, uh, it is good. The intensity in the borders is, is massive. When you play a border team, there's, there's not, nothing quite like it. You always get... A, you always get a few bust ups, but I mean that's that's it's just a little friendly rivalry. There's obviously a lot of pride and a lot of um, like bragging rights in the borders. You always want to be the top border team, and it's and you want the, the the supporters and the fans to sort of be doing that as well. They've got friends in the borders, so you want a little bit of niggles here and there. There's a great home base here. I mean, uh, there'll hardly be a place on a Saturday night uh, in the borders where they're not speaking about rugby, uh, which will be different from the cities, I would think. It's still the hotbed. Oh, definitely. Without a doubt. A colours on that be fissed, co-glaze in RBS Premiership, can a lot of yiri can hazer. A hamishnach can go hoch, the homasan skipping again. These boys could fit in any team. Some of these guys here could easily go on and be professional rugby players, potentially international rugby players. The one thing that holds them back, from my humble opinion, the opportunity. And that's all it is. Does it help in terms of understanding what he's driving at, what he, what he might want you to do? It, it does, yeah, because I've been playing rugby since five-year-old and he's been the same. We've kind of got a good understanding of what each other wants, what we need to be doing in certain areas of field, what he wants at training, what, what he wants the players to see. So it does, it does help in aspects and in other aspects, when he's shouting a bit, it's, uh, it kind of gets tough. I want to win the game, which is most important for me, but certainly we want to, to, to make sure that people get their money's worth it and see the ball being spun and making big hits and having good set pieces and, and just having a wee bit, uh, you know, excitement. You know, we want to entertain. It's always got to be fun. These, as I said, we've already covered. These boys are working all day. They don't want to come here and play a boring game. They want to come here and enjoy themselves. If, if rugby's no fun, well, what's the point of playing? From Division 3 to the upper reaches of the Premiership in the last few seasons, what would it mean to win something this season? 
It would be massive. I mean, the number one goal for this club uh, is to win Premier One. We've been so close the past two years. It's, it's been far too long for, for a club of this uh, magnitude. Uh, let's say the past two or three years we have turned things round. We're at the top of Premier One now and we want to be at the, at the very top and, and win that championship. We have a great bunch of players that all are, are passionate uh, and they want to win for the club. Uh, they went through some hard times in the years gone by, but, you know, thank you. Patterson, God rest his soul, always used to say that Gala was a, a sleeping giant. And, uh, and I've said the last time, a couple of seasons ago, I think the giant's woken up and he's no one to go back to sleep. Beautiful.